Hello YouTube and hello viewers and welcome back to yet again another episode in creating our 2D side scroller. Um, we have gone on a very very long journey. I think we're getting very close to um, less than 20. I mean geez I never thought it'd be that many episodes but uh, a lot of requests are coming in for different types of things so obviously these series are going to get um, a lot more bigger. Um, a shout out for those people that are dropping comments um, into the videos. Thanks. Um, you you definitely give me some more content to look into um, and to make some more videos uh, for you guys obviously to learn um, how to make things i.e. in a 2D side scroller world uh, and how to interact with objects and etc. Um, as you remember in our last session we looked at creating our coin system which was the first part um, and that was basically just setting up the coins um, so therefore it would start counting uh, how many coins we had um, gathered inside our game. What we're going to look at in this episode is how do we make that system a little bit more advanced. Uh, I.e. in this case um, we're going to look at how we could get the coins for example once we collect so many um, it could then do something after we've collected again so many different well, amounts of coins that is. So without further ado let's jump ourselves straight in there um, and let's get started. So um, pretty much starting off where we left off uh, we have our, our main screen with our character uh, and our animated coins and this was my pumpkin and, and that was my heart and if you remember correctly we made this blueprint uh, which was everything to do with our coin uh, so when we collide with the sphere it cast to our 2D character and then we had this event called the coin system um, and then obviously then destroyed the actor after that um, and basically what was happening then is that let me just drag this into there so it's a little easier for you guys is in our blueprint, so in our 2D side scroller blueprint, <coughs> we made our coin system uh, where basically we made this variable and if you remember correctly this was an integer not a float because remember floats are decimals whereas integers are whole numbers and all we did was a little bit of math saying okay well if the coins current amount add whatever we gathered then obviously set our coins to be at what it should be. Um, so we're actually going to work a little bit off this um, for this session not just yet because there's a few things we need to set up first because um, yeah we can maybe set it to actually let's make this video quite short what we'll do is we'll set up the system working um, and then in our next video uh, we'll create a live system so uh, you'd have so many lives inside the game and then uh, depending on how many times <coughs> you die and etc uh, you're getting lives and whatever you need so without further ado let's get ourselves sorted um, and get ourselves started on what we need to start working on. So if you could open up your 2D side scroller character okay where we've got our coin system we're actually going to work off this one here um, so our actual coin system and we're going to make it mm, fairly easy to understand it's not too difficult um, because pretty much it's the same idea um, of what we have here with the comparing um, of the float but we can't obviously compare a float because that's slightly different uh, we've actually got now an integer which is a little bit more different to what you've been currently working with. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag off our set node and we're going to say compare. Um, so you should be pretty used to this by now so compare and we should have compare float or compare an integer. Now remember our variable that we created is an integer so it most definitely needs to be an integer. You, can, you can't do a float. Uh, it'll just confuse the system and it'll confuse you too so you don't really want to do that. So we're going to compare the integer and you can see it's very similar um, to what we have down here. So we'll drag this node in um, so we connect the set to our compare and what we're going to compare is how many coins we actually want to collect. Okay now this is where it gets a little bit tricky and you need to think smart. If I said in my game okay if I have a hundred coins okay so if I gathered a hundred coins what am I going to do? Okay, so what am I actually going to do if I get these 100 coins? We then have these little values we can come off. All right, so we're going back to the good old math days, uh, you know, when you hated your math teachers and, and all sorts of weird things like that, where we have greater than 100, equal to equal to 100, or less than 100. Now, if I've got a 100 value here, and I said, okay, if it's greater than 100, let's print a string, okay, and the string we want to print is hmm, let's let's do this. Let's get our coins. We'll get that, and we'll just snap that into there. So basically, all I'm doing is I'm just going to see how many coins he currently has in a print string. 
So it's going to take how many coins I've got um, and it's going to show it as a string. So as a value and that's going to print on the left hand side and we'll have a look at that in a minute. I'm going to do the same again. So I'm going to get my coins. So I'm going to get, actually I don't need to do it twice. So I can just use this one. Okay. But if I say equal to and equal to, let's have a look what happens. So print string and we'll just drag that into there again. So we're just printing off um, two strings in regards to how many coins we have and we just want to see any complications that we're going to come across. Now, if I had to play the game, obviously I'm going to have to try and collect 100 coins and that will take me forever because I don't have 100 coins in my map. So I'm going to cheat just quickly. On my character coins, I'm just going to quickly change this value to 98. Okay, as an example, so we're going to start with 98 coins pretty much. All right. Now, let's play the scene and you can see on my HUD, I've already got 98 coins because I've set that variable to automatically start with 98 coins. Now, I want you to pay special attention to what's going to happen on the left. Okay, it will be pretty much where my health bar is. I'll collect one coin that makes 99. I then hit this coin and you can see it's going to trigger a hundred value. Okay, because I've collected a hundred coins. All right. If I then collect that coin, it's going to say 101. And if I collect that coin, it's going to say 102. Now, the reason why it keeps incrementing is because if we look at our code, Anything that's going to be over 100, so greater than 100, it's going to keep printing the amount of coins that I have. Okay? If it was equal to 100, it would print just this once because it would be 100 coins that we had. Okay? Now, let's just say for testing sakes, I don't know if this, I don't think so, it'll crash, but we can try. If I decided to, again, come off this string and say print string. Okay. And I'm just going to print the same thing again. So I'm just going to place that into there. Okay. Let's see what happens. So notice it now shows the value on the top left hand corner because what I'm doing is I'm printing any values that are less than a hundred. Okay. Hence why math is a little bit of key here um, for what we're working with. Now, why am I doing this? Well, because one, you need to think smart, and two, we need to do a little bit um, of tinkering, very similar to what we did with the health set, uh, where we set it back to um, a full value. We would, might need to reset our coin count back to zero. Okay, so let's delete these all out because we don't need all of them. It's it was, this was just an example sake to show you what would happen. Okay, now just quickly for two seconds, have a think, right? Bef maybe even pause my video and think which one of these three nodes it will go into. And really, the node we wanted to go into is this one, equal to and equal to. We don't want it to go greater because that's going to put the user or the player at a disadvantage where he'll be one coin down inside the level. And that's something you don't want to do, um, especially if the player could get annoyed um, and obviously won't play your game. So we're going to pull off the string and it's as simple as this. We're going to set char coins. Okay, so we're going to set our char coins back to a zero value, which means if I collect 100 coins, it's then going to reset the value back to zero. So if we play, collect that coin, collect another, notice it's going to take my coins all the way back to zero. Now, why do I say this is very important? Because, well, in our next video, right, we're going to look at how do we increment things like lives or anything that we have um, in regards to using coins or gems or whatever you're using inside your video. Now, I know this is a very short video, um, but I just wanted you to understand that we don't go off the greater sign. You could have gone off this if you made the value 99. That would have been perfect. If you had 99 in there, and you said greater than, then you can set that value. But there's going to be more stuff that's going to start coming off this in our next video. I know this was very short. Um, apologies if you're expecting a very long video. Um, but I just want to make sure that the crux of the system was there um, and nothing was broken. Again, thank you very much. My name is Wayne. Um, it was nice having you for this episode. Um, I look forward to the next episode, which will start looking at creating a life system. Um, so we can start putting some lives and etc. into our character. Um, and we can start setting up with our coins and etc. Um, to start adding 
And also when we start taking damage, we can start removing those lives. Thank you very much. Don't forget to subscribe, like, um, and etc. I'll see you in our next video. Thank you very much. Goodbye.